Yeah, we're back in black playing Pathfinder and today it's time finally for the Magus the Magus who is the Magus you ask well the Magus is kind of the <laughs> love child between the wizard and the fighter he's the guy who's studied a lot of books and stuff much like the wizard has done but he's also studied fighting like the fighter has done uh, but of course you can't you know get the best of both worlds so he's kind of dabbled in both but not really perfected anything much like the bard has dabbled a little bit there's a little bit of artist has dabbled a little bit here dabbled a little bit there but not really you know perfected any of the arts so that's that's kind of what the <laughs> what the magus is on paper this guy sounds amazing. He can do anything that the wizard can do, and he can do anything that the fighter can do. Uh, that's not really true, though. <laughs> he, much like the bard is not a wizard and a fighter, uh, so too is the magus not a wizard and a fighter. He's uh, a shitty fighter and a shitty wizard. <laughs> Combined. Uh, this class, I have to say that... It, this class is a little bit unfortunate for me. Uh, because I think that this class works much better both on lower difficulties and it works much better on uh, if you're planning playing pen and paper because the thing is very very jank and very very irritating to play this class if you play them as you're supposed to play them so instead what i'm going to propose in this guide is an alternative way to play i usually don't want to go into alternative ways of playing the magus but the thing is if i suggest the regular way of playing the magus because i always uh, have my guides as uh, like how you're supposed to play this on unfair difficulty you're gonna have a miserable time playing the magus that way uh, okay so maybe i should start off uh, you know describing the magus as i usually do with it <laughs> it's become a uh, like a thing i do always uh, how how well does this guy position himself uh, talking if you talk uh, combat prowess and utility and i always take the example you know fighter 100 percent combat prowess and 0% utility and the bard of course being the reverse 100% utility and 0% combat prowess now the magus <laughs> the magus has some problems <laughs> he can't really hit anything in combat and he doesn't have many good spells <laughs> uh, so uh, i would put him at about 40% combat prowess and 20% utility yes that's the lowest score i know i know but that's just the typical magus in a typical uh, on the first hour, but we're gonna talk about a way to remedy this to actually make him decent. He won't be, in my opinion, he won't be the strongest class. He will pretty much be outshined by most other classes, but you can make him pretty decent, and you can make him into a build uh, where I think the Magus shines is in in a stamina, in a long race where you need to deal out a lot of spell damage from range. Then it's actually the best class at doing that. So. You always want your, in my opinion at least, you always want to build your class so that it's best at one particular thing. Maybe that is buffing, maybe that is healing, uh, maybe that is tanking. Whatever it is, you want to make it as good as possible at that. The Magus is not go gonna be the best DPSer, it's not gonna be the best healer, it's not gonna be the best buffer. But it can be the most, in a stamina race where you need a lot of spells, the Magus can have the most spells of all the classes. So that's pretty amazing. So that's what we're going to talk about today also. So, the selling point with the Magus, of course, is that he can deliver his spells through his weapon. And this sounds amazing, of course, that he can both attack and cast spells. What's not to like about that? Well, the problem is this. At first level, you're going to get this thing called spell combat. And it means that you can... Uh, it, it, they describe it as your two-weapon fighting. You're holding one one uh, weapon in this hand and then you're wielding your spell with the other hand and then you take a minus two penalty to your attack rolls and then as a full round action you can then cast a spell and attack uh, the problem with this first of all this guy has a medium progression on his base attack bonus and as i've said this is the same as the rogue if you have a medium spell progression then you need someone to buff you up else you won't hit anything anything in spell combat also he has the added problem onto this that he needs a lot of intellect to be able to cast his spells and he also needs strength to be able to hit or not and dexterity and constitution because he needs to be close to something so he's so strained on resources so strained on skill points that it's very very hard to create a good magus honestly very very difficult and if you add on top of this that you also take a minus two penalty <laughs> on his attack rolls i mean <laughs> This guy's not hitting anything. He's not hitting anything. Uh, so that's a little bit sad. Also, keep in mind, mind that all these things like spell strike, which we're going to talk about, and spell combat, they are full round actions. So if you move, they don't work. So you need to stand completely still 
and then you need to cast your spells and attack. And in this game, how it works is that you... I don't know, maybe you have another way of doing this, but it seems like if you right-click that, if you have something on auto cost, then it will perform a spell combat or a spell strike, depending on what you're using, uh, depending on what mode you're in. Uh, but yeah, that, that's very fidgety. And there are other things which are also... I mean, all these things, they're kind of based on the implementation of the game. So I don't want to really smack talk uh, the class that much, because in pen and paper, I think that this class works better. And also, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit harsh since I'm uh, comparing this to unfair difficulty, where it is quite difficult for many classes to really perform. So, uh, he gains Spell Strike which at second level, which means that he, any spell that is cast of touch range, he can also get one attack in at the same time. Keep in mind that on the regular Magus, touch in this case means not ranged touch attack. It means an actual touch attack, like Shocking Grasp, for instance, uh, is an attack you can use to do this. There's very few spells which have this, uh, and they're all quite shy, to, to be honest. They're all very, very bad. So, <laughs> and then you all will also only get one attack. And, of course, the Magus, they've thought about this issue, and they thought about a way to remedy this, that you won't be able to hit something, because you have a shit progression, you have a minus two and attack roll. So they gave you this ability called Arcane. Uh, okay, okay, you have an Arcane pool, we're gonna talk about that. But you get the ability to use your Arcane points to enhance your weapon, so that it gets better. The problem with this is that... It only lasts one minute, which is annoying, so you need to refresh that. But then there's also abilities that you're gonna get from the Magus Arcana, which are gonna give you additional ways of being able to hit. You're gonna get extra modifiers, gonna be able to, instead of uh, attacking their normal AC, you're gonna be able to attack their uh, touch AC and stuff like that. But all these things only last one round, so you need to click them all the time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, the Arcane Pool. The Arcane Pool is the only reason that I would consider this class not a joke. <laughs> arcane Pool is what saves this class, and what makes you actually be able to use this class as something useful. So the Arcane Pool uh, is a resource pool that you get. Uh, it, you will have points equal to half your Magus level, uh, plus your Intelligence modifier, and then you will be able to pick up uh, extra Arcane Pool points from abilities later on, and this is very sweet, and I would definitely recommend if you go with magus you need pick up extra arcane pool because arcane pool is what saves your class in my opinion so you can do a couple of things with arcane pool you can uh, enhance your weapons as i talked about but it's very very fidgety but more importantly what you can do with this this is the entire thing which saves this class in my opinion is spell recall at fourth level the magus learned to use his arcane pool to recall spells he has already cast with a swift action he can recall any single magus spell that's already been prepared and can cast that spell by expanding a number of points from his arcane pool equal to that spell's level so Spell Recall, when you get it, it's very, very strong. Immediately, when you get this, it will make the class so much stronger. Because now you can finally stay at range, and you can just recall your spells again and again and again, and you can have an insane supply of spells. Later on in the game, Spell Recall will also upgrade to a le level 11, where you get improved Spell Recall, where you only will have to play pay half the spells level from your Arcane Pool. And at this point, you will hopefully have a huge Arcane Pool. So you can cost the highest level spells that you will have access to, but keep in mind that this guy has a slow progression of spells. Uh, it's even slower than the Sorcerer. This is a really, really slow progression of spells. So you won't be able to get to the highest level of spells even, And but you will get some decently high level spells. You will have a lot of uses of those spells. And that's where I think the Magus has shines. That's where his strength lies, in my opinion. That you can get to maybe disintegrate, for instance, um, and you can just have like 20 disintegrates. <laughs> okay, you, it's gonna, you, you're still gonna cast them as slow as anyone else, so it's not gonna be higher DPS, but if you, if you think about this as a marathon and not as a sprint, then you can dish out a lot of total damage from having so many spells uh, from your arcane ball. So that's, in my opinion, the strength of the Magus class lies. Then you get Magus bonus feats. Uh, these are nothing too special to talk about so instead what we're going to talk about uh, is that they get medium armor where they can cast spells uh, starting on level 7 which is quite nice uh, without the arcane spell failure of course then they gain uh, half of their level as uh, fighter level uh, and that's for qualifying for feats because there are a lot of good fighter feats that you 
I would not recommend that you pick them up though. I would recommend that you go with as many points as possible into extra arcane pool and then just pick up the most necessary things and just stay out of combat with this class. Uh, we're gonna talk about the subclasses and there are some ways if you still want to use a weapon uh, that you can actually do that with the subclasses. But with the main magus, I would not go into close combat with a main, <laughs> main magus uh, on the higher difficulties. If you play on the lower difficulties, then fine. But on the higher difficulties, no, I would not do that. The risk is that you're just gonna get brutally murdered because you only have 1d8 hit, hit die and you've already invested into intellect and you've invested into strength to be able to hit something so your constitution is gonna be shit and probably your dexterity is gonna be shit so you're not gonna have any armor at least not for the early game before you get to wear medium armor <laughs> without the arcane spell failure so yeah uh, this class is weird also the power spikes is very very weird he starts off as one of the worst classes in the game <laughs> is actually very horrible at level one. He gets a few spells, but he does not yet have access to spell recall. I think if they were to fix this class, the easiest fix they would do is put spell recall at level one. Then at least they would have a really, really good early game, uh, this class. But now they kind of go up and down and they never... It's like if you look at a good class, like the sorcerers, they go like this, right? Like slowly, slowly getting stronger. But this class is like, they, they kind of get to almost sorcerer level and they dip down and they dip down and they dip down and they dip down. They never really hit their stride, it feels like, when you play uh, a Magus. They never really get to be that super powerful thing that you want to have in your party. So that's a shame. Uh, then you also later on get to use arcane heavy armor, which is, I mean, it's a nice thing that you can use heavy armor. Though I will say that the way I would play the Magus would be just, you know, stay away, away from the fire. So now we get to subclassing, and the first subclass is called the Eldritch Scion. And the Eldritch Scion, uh, oppo as opposed to the Magus, is actually a sorceress as a base instead of a wizard. This doesn't mean that they get access to better spells. Well, they might but we're gonna talk about that later on but what it means is that they use charisma instead of uh, intelligence but they are still using the same list of spells they're still using the magus list of spells you don't gain access to the sorcerer's list of spells that would have been amazing uh, much like the magus doesn't gain the wizard list of spells he gains a limited subset of the wizard list uh, so too does the elder sign just get a limited subset uh, which is the magus list so he uses charisma instead of uh, intelligence and he, there's some minor tweaks of course with the class like they moved around improved spell combat and great spell combat which i didn't even talk about because i don't think they're particularly interesting <laughs> when using the spell combat ability magus is a plus two circumstance bonus on his concentration checks which i mean it's nice because you're casting spells while you're uh, wielding a weapon so it might be somewhat useful but i, I don't even consider this uh, an important bonus <laughs> really so, uh, the big thing about the Eldritch Sign is that they gain access, much like the Sorcerers gain access to a Bloodline, the Eldritch Sign also gets get access to a Bloodline. So this means that they will be able to cast some spells which you otherwise would not have access to, because these spells will be added on top of the regular spells that they get access to, and there's some abilities that will get access to. Uh, so you can do some cute things with this, as for instance you could go into Abyssal Bloodline and you could have like, uh, you get then plus 4 strength naturally and you could get uh, transformation which can finally fix your uh, base attack bonus issue, but if you go into that transformation form you will have the downside that you can't cast spells, so you will kind of turn into a decent, <laughs> decent fighter finally, but you can't cast spells, so... Why didn't you go just fighter in the first place would be the question, but you can do that. You can do some things like that, uh, which can kind of save the class in a way like that. But the problem for the Eldritch Sign is that they lose out on the most important ability, in my opinion, which is Spell Recall. If they would have regained Spell Recall, they would probably just have been the superior Magus choice, which you would always have gone with. But since they don't retain that... Mm, I don't know. I'm a little bit torn on this subclass. Uh, unless you have a very specific goal in mind and maybe do some subclassing. I don't think it's particularly strong. I think it's just better to go uh, with a sorceress or a fighter or whatever it is that you wanted to go with instead uh, of going with the other side. Then we get to the sword saint. And the sword saint for me is another miss. I don't like saying miss really, but it's a miss if you're a pure sword saint, I think. But he might be a hit if you're doing some multi-classing. So he gains one ability which I think is quite interesting, unique, and quite good. Uh, or decently good, I'd say. 
which is canny defense. When wearing light or no armor, wielding a chosen weapon and not using a shield, a sword synth adds one point of intelligent bonus, if any, per Magus level uh, as a dodge bonus to her armor class. Uh, so first of all, keep in mind that there are other ways of getting dodge bonuses, so this might not stack because it's like an... Uh, I know there's an ability, for instance, that gives you plus one dodge bonus. It doesn't stack with that ability, so keep that in mind. But also keep in mind that you need to have both a high intelligence and a high level. You can't just take one level of Sword Saint and expect to get all your intelligence bonus. Like, for instance, you can do with a, uh, a monk. You can just pick up one level of monk and then you will have your wisdom to your AC as long as you're not wearing armor. You can't really do that with a Sword Saint. With a Sword Saint, you need to both invest in levels and you need to have a high intelligence so it's a little bit more difficult to multi-class this but i could see something like maybe you do a rogue um maybe a rogue monk sword saint for instance and then you get both your dexterity which you use as your attack rolls if you're a rogue so you get uh your dexterity bonus to your ac you get the wisdom bonus to your ac and you get your intelligence bonus to your ac so if you max those out you can have an insanely high uh, AC and that maybe can make some kind of AC tank and stuff like that but if you go with this as a pure subclass I think it's a miss because it doesn't solve the main problem with the Magus which is that they can't hit anything in melee combat while they can the, the only chance they have of hitting something in melee combat is if they're using their if they, you have a very active playstyle and you use their uh, what's, it, what's it even called the Magus Arcana and get abilities which make you hit their touch AC instead of the regular AC, then maybe you'll have a sh chance of hitting something. But then you also need to, you know, hit that thing every round and it will deplete quite quickly. So yes, it's, it's a miss for me. You gain some extra damage things, uh, damage bonuses in the form of perfect strike, uh, which makes you able to do deal your maximum damage by, again, sp uh, spending your arcane pool. And you gain, let's see here, where is it? Lethal Focus, where you add your Intelligence modifier on damage rolls, where you show some weapon. Uh, but then again, the, the damage is not the problem, so we're not really solving that. You have some other cute things, like you have Counter-Strike, whenever someone near you casts a spell, uh, you get to attack into them, and you get uh, Lightning Draw, which means you use your Intelligence modifier, as well as uh, your Dexterity modifier on Initiative rolls, so you're probably very often going to go first, but as I've said, uh, initiative is not as important as in an independent paper in this game because you're most likely always gonna go first since you're gonna initiate all the fights, you can initiate them from out of threat range and that way you will essentially always have uh, the first jump on your enemies, so it's not that important. It's a little bit of a miss from me and most importantly of course they lose out on spell recall which I've <laughs> talked enough about. Now let's go to my favorite and my, the only thing I would pick up if I went for the Magus, I would go with the Eldritch Archer. Because in my opinion, it's the only functioning Magus. Because they get ranged spell combat. Instead of a melee weapon, an Eldritch Archer must use a ranged weapon for spell combat. She doesn't need a free hand for ranged spell combat. The Eldritch Archer cannot accept an attack penalty to gain bonus on concentration checks to cast spells defensively. And they get ranged spell strike, which is the same things as regular spell strike, but it's ranged. So now finally, <laughs> finally we can actually use those ranged touch attacks and everything that we have on range and at the same time shoot on something so we can actually do what the class is supposed to do without having to be close to something, risking dying and also not even being able to use our strongest spells because the strongest attacks uh, that you can use are ranged touch attacks. They're not touch attacks usually. Uh, most touch attacks are usually, usually quite chice, so... Finally, we get access to that, uh, and now this this class kind of functions because now you don't need as many skill points because you can just spec into dexterity so that you're able to hit something, and you can spec into intelligence so that again your spells, and that is pretty much it. You don't need too high strength because you're uh, you don't need strength to hit with a ranged weapon and you don't need to have a too high constitution because you're gonna stay out of combat and you will be a little bit more tank of course since you will still be able to use your medium armor fighter training and everything, and it will also retain spell recall, so it's pretty much <laughs> just a strict upgrade to the Magus, and I would pretty much pick this up every damn time, because this is, in my opinion, the only class, the only subclass which makes the Magus functioning, and finally, it's a decent class. <laughs> so, yes. I'm sorry if I smack-talked your favorite subclass of the Magus, but these are just my humble, very humble.
opinions. So now I'm gonna uh, start creating a elder charge just an ex as an example, but <laughs> I'm not gonna use. Uh, usually I just use the regular, the you know, the most typical subclass because I don't really consider the magus a functioning class. <laughs> I will go with Eldritch Archer. I will make an exception just for this class. Uh, so we're gonna go with Eldritch Archer, and here it's good to have a lot of intellect. We don't need charisma on this class. We don't need wisdom on this class. Not particularly, at least. Uh, and I would probably actually go for dexterity uh, with my with my extra stats here. Uh, something like this could be fine. Or maybe this is even better. The thing is, you don't need 20 int as you need on other characters. And why is this? Uh, I usually always say that you need to have 20 intelligence on your character. Because if you don't have enough, or if you get to 20 in intellect, then that bonus will then... Uh, make it so that you get one extra spell, and it does the same uh, for the Magus, but the thing is, your spells are mostly gonna come from your Arcane Pool, your ability to replenish by using your Arcane Pool, uh, your spells are not gonna come from your uh, levels and from your modifiers to your intellect as it does from other classes, so it's not as important to have intellect uh, 20. You can even go so far as uh, to remove po two points, have 20 dex and 16 int, because you're not gonna be able to cost those higher level spells anyways and 16 is gonna be just fine so you can go with something like this and this would be uh, just fine for this particular class uh, for skill points and if this is your main character I always recommend going persuasion because there are a couple of really really good persuasion checks even though this class is not really meant it's not really super strong on persuasion checks as you can see as a minus uh, two modifier as charisma I still think it's good to go that if this is your main character uh, he's not really adept at persuasion, so I would go for other things, such as stealth, trickery, mobility, you know, whatever you want here. Knowledge world and knowledge arcana are pretty nice. These make you able to identify items, so I uh, like them quite a lot. Uh, but as you can see, this is... You get a lot of skill points from just having a good int modifier. So you can even make this as a skill monkey if you want to, but I think uh, that this class is still decent enough uh, to not have... You don't really want to go the skill monkey route and just sacrifice everything because he has still has some good things about him and he will be able to cast strong spells and he will have a lot of spells uh, through his able so through his ability to replenish his spells uh, through the use of his arcane pool so now we get to abilities and let's see here you can load for one second or two or three <laughs> it takes quite a while uh, so the most important thing I think for this class is not to go for these fighting things because you're not gonna have enough talents anyway to be adept on fighting I would more focus on spells so I would definitely recommend that you pick up extra arcane pool uh, extra arcane pool gives you two extra uh, two extra resources for your arcane pool and this is pretty much the same as if you would have plus four intellect, so it's quite a substantial bonus. And you can pick up extra arcane pool more times than one. I, I think this is a little bit bugged, because I think you're supposed to be able to pick this up on every level where you're able to pick up abilities, but for some reason you can't pick it up more than three times in this game. I think that's a bug, uh, and that's very annoying, because that really holds back the already weak Magus from being as strong as he could be if he would have access to being able to pick up extra arcane pool on every level, because then in the end game he would have an insanely high ar arcane pool and he would be more valuable to his party. But as it stands, you can only pick this up three times. Uh, and I would definitely do that. And just extra arcane pool, extra arcane pool is so all Just max out that arcane pool as soon as <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, then for your skills, magic missile is quite important. Uh, then you can go with these things, which are I think corrosive touch is a touch ability. Um, that could be pretty much anything you want here. You have so many spill spells. Shocking Grasp is another uh, touch range ability. Um, let's see, you have shield. Not pretty much everything. We have magic missile. I don't know. Expeditious Read. Something. Uh, the most important spell to pick up, in my opinion, on this build is going to be magic missile still, because it's a good damaging spell on uh, unfair difficulty, because it doesn't allow your enemies to get a save against it. Uh, which is very important because if you allow a save for your opponents and <laughs> most often they will just pass it because they have such high stats on unfair difficulties. So magic missile is very solid and then when you get to level 4 uh, and get your get more spells then you will be able to 
uh, refresher magic missiles and you have like um, 16 magic missiles or something. You have an insane amount of magic missiles. You can at least use those uh, until you get fireball. I think you get fireball on level 7. And from level 7 you should be decently strong. You're not going to be amazing. Uh, you're not going to be as strong as maybe a wizard which has access to even better spells at this point. But you're going to be decent. You have a lot of fireballs at this point and you can dish out a lot of damage over a long period of time uh, so at this point you will be quite useful but until you get to level 7 you will be uh, mediocre at best <laughs> so what I say about this class so that's the expedition treat and that is pretty much it uh, keep in mind that this class is a class you might want to subclass maybe <laughs> and if you want to go for a special class uh, then lawful good is quite good because you can pick up paladin you can pick up uh, uh, what's his face pick up the monk and stuff like that but if you're if you're going with something else if you're not plan on multi-classing then any alignment is good it's not alignment restricted in any way yes that's pretty much it that is my guide to the mags i hope i don't bash him too much uh is most of his problems lies in my opinion in that it's very fidgety to use it's very hard to use it doesn't really work with the interface that we got now in the, with the implementation in the game uh, it's quite different than pen and paper and also it works much better on lower difficulties so that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.